Hello everyone and welcome to our partner webinar, Wolf SSL for STM32 Cube MX V6, presented by ST Microelectronics Senior Marketing Manager Loic Chossa and Wolf SSL Senior Embedded Software Engineer David Garski. My name is Riley DeGarmo and I'll be moderating today's webinar. All attendees will be in listen-only mode. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. This webinar will be recorded and made available on our YouTube channel at a later date. I invite you to follow ST and Wolf SSL on our socials, and please feel free to email us with additional questions following the presentation. Before I hand it off to the guys, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Wolf SSL as a company. Wolf SSL is open source embedded security software focused on providing lightweight and embedded security solutions for desktop, enterprise, and cloud environments with an emphasis on speed, size, portability, features, and standards compliance. With SSL TLS products and a crypto library, Wolf SSL is supporting high security designs in automotive, avionics, and other industries as well. In avionics, Wolf SSL supports complete RTCA DO178C DAL Level A certification. In automotive, we support MISRA C capabilities. For government consumers, Wolf SSL has a strong history in FIPS 140 2 with upcoming FIPS 140 3. Wolf SSL supports industry standards up to the current TLS 1.3 and DTLS 1.2, is up to 20 times smaller than OpenSSL, offers a simple API, an OpenSSL compatibility layer, is backed by the robust WolfCrypt cryptography library, 24 by 7 support, and much more. Our products are open source, giving customers the freedom to look under the hood. Wolf SSL was founded in 2004 by Todd Auska and Larry Stefanik when they realized that there wasn't an open source, dual licensed embedded SSL library available. Open SSL existed at the time, but there was a demand for an alternative that was easily portable, smaller, faster, available under a clear commercial license, was equipped with a clean and modern API, and offered commercial style developer support. Wolf SSL was born into this market need with an open SSL compatibility layer that we are constantly expanding. The first instance of Wolf SSL was a clean room implementation for MySQL. Today, Wolf SSL secures over 2 billion connections global. We have more than 1,000 OEM customers and dozens of resellers. Wolf SSL is made up of almost 40 dedicated employees in 2020, most of which are engineers. This progress is supported by a strong partner network with companies like ST that we're thrilled to get to collaborate with. Since the beginning, our engineering team has developed several embedded security products, including WolfCrypt with FIPS certification and a FIPS ready offering, MQTT up to the V5 specification, SSH V2, a TPM 2.0 portable project, a secure bootloader known as Wolf Boot as well as Java wrappers and JSSE support. We also offer commercial support for curl. All of these offerings are accompanied by thorough maintenance and support plans up to the 24 by seven level. Once again, something you won't find anywhere else. Wolf SSL is dual licensed, which is to say that we can be shipped with your commercial products or licensed in open source projects under GPL v2. If you have any questions in regards to licensing or our company, feel free to send a note to licensing at wolfssl.com and we'll be happy to help. And now I'll turn it over to David Garski to take a closer look at Wolf SSL technology. Thank you all. Hello, my name is David Garski and today I'm going to talk about our Wolf SSL libraries. We'll start off talking about our TLS and cryptographic library that are bundled together. Wolf SSL is a lightweight li library designed for portability and configurability. It's written in C with many wrappers available. We support all the latest standards for TLS and DTLS. It can be built with a small footprint to conserve flash and memory, or we can scale up to high-end desktop servers. Our library is up to 20 times smaller than OpenSSL. We've been ported to a long list of operating systems and can be even be used in bare metal. 
We have an extensive OpenSSL compatibility layer with over 1,000 APIs. We support integration with many open source projects, such as Apache, Lighty, Nginx, Nginx MySQL, Curl, OpenVPN, OpenSSH, WPA Supplicant. There's a long, long list. We have hardware crypto acceleration support for Intel, ASNI, AVX. Uh, the ARM V8 crypto extensions, Intel Quick Assist, and long list of other things. For STM32, we support the symmetric acceleration of AES and SHA-2, and also their PKA, PKA which is public key, uh, acceleration for ECC curves. We are NSA Suite B compatible. We've been validated to FIPS level uh, FIPS 140-2 level one, and we're working on FIPS 140-3. We have DO 178C certification for aircraft systems, which is like mission critical systems. Here's our list of algorithms supported. This is not a complete list, but it's most of them uh, for our WolfCrypt library. Common ones are RSA, ECC, AESGCM, CHA-CHA, 20 poly 1305, ED curve, for example. For ST, we, we support the following microcontrollers. They're mainstream F1 and G0, the ultra-low power L4 and L5, the high-performance series, which is the F2, F4, F7, and H7, and their wireless series, the WB55. We support the STM32 public key acceleration for ECC on the L5 and the WB55. We also support crypto coprocessors for the ST-SAFE A100 and A110 which are ECC authentication chips. They use I2C to accelerate ECC operations and protect the key. We also support the TPM 2.0 module, the ST33, which I'll talk, to, I'll talk about in a second. So quickly, I'm gonna go over the Wolf MQTT library. MQTT is a message queuing telemetry protocol and is a pub sub protocol designed for uh, lightweight systems. So this library was written from scratch in C and supports all the latest standards uh, that are used by all the, the major cloud providers. So that's version 3.11, version 5, and the new sensor node protocol. Uh, it supports all the quality of service levels, supports TLS for encrypting communication using Wolf SSL. It's written with no external dependencies, small code size. It's got network stack ports for Linux, Windows, FreeRTOS, TCP, LWIP, and there's examples for Azure IoT Hub, uh, AWS, IBM Watson, and we have simple client examples. We also have a firmware update example and an MQTT SN example. And this can be used with FIPS, VR, or WolfCrypt FIPS. So MQTT is just a lightweight protocol. Uh, it's designed to be able to subscribe to your top topic and publish a message and receive those. Uh, it really efficiently packs messages together, so there's a very low overhead. And with TLS, you can use session resumption to, to reduce the reconnection time. So Wolf SSH is our SSH client server. It's lightweight and embeddable. It supports SSH v2, which is covered by the RFC. It's not tied to any threading model. It supports password or public based, a uh, public key based authentication. It includes support for the secure file transfer protocol and the secure copy protocol and supports all these algorithms. And it has been interop tested against OpenSSH, PuTTY, FreeSSH, D, and Bitvise. And we can support FIPS with it as well. So this protocol is designed for secure remote login uh, and other secure network services and designed to provide re secure remote access by users or to other computers. It replaced the, the plain text legacy protocols like Telnet, R login, RSH. And it adds authentication encryption is typically used on port 22. So the most common use case for our customers is embedded SSH server. So you can go in remotely and run shell commands or transfer files. So Wolf TPM is, a, is based on the, the TPM 2.0 TCG specification. Uh, it uses a trusted platform module, which is a cryptographic hardware module that includes key generation and storage capabilities. It was written originally uh, for version 1.1 back in 2001, this Wolf TPM library uses our TPM 2.0 specification released in 2013. 
So it implements all of the APIs defined by the specification, uh, and it supports both a SPI, I squared C, some other interfaces like the dev TPM or the TPM software simulators as well. It's designed for easy portability to different platforms. It uses native C code, single IO callback for the hardware interface, and there's no external dependencies, no malloc trees. And we have HAL, which is hardware examples for Linux, Raspberry Pi, and STM32 Cube HAL. And it's been tested with all the TPM vendor chips, including the ST33 TPM module. So we also added wrappers to simplify some really common use cases, such as key generation, RSA, and ECC type things, uh, non-volatile access like storing keys or data. There's also examples for all of these things, including TLS client server, benchmarking, um, getting the timestamp, creating a certificate, all those things. So this is just a compare, comparison of features between two common modules, the ST33 and the Infineon SLB9670. Just compare some of the algorithms and certifications and power and all those things. You're welcome to review those. Uh, this is a benchmark between the two, asymmetric benchmarks is operations per second for RSA and ECC. So we also have a Wolf boot library, which is a secure bootloader. It's a lightweight portable secure bootloader and it's a generic implementation. It's easy to port with um, the HAL API. It runs on virtually any microcontroller. There is no heat memory use, it's all stack based. And it's safe to use in the aerospace, medical, and automotive. And it's been ported and supported with VO178. It uses a dual bank mechanism where you have two partitions. The, up, the bootloader itself handles the update and will perform the, the swapping of the partitions. And it does it in a, a fail safe way where if the power is lost, it will resume where it left off when power resumes. It also protects against version downgrade attacks and it has a rollback in case the update fails. It's OS agnostic, so it's running in bare metal, and it supports RSA, ECDSA, or ED25519, and it can support SHA-256 and SHA-3384 as well. So it supports external spy flash. You can also update the bootloader, but that's not power fail safe. The source code and former examples are available, of course, uh, and it supports all the Cortex-M, the ARM V8s and uh, the RISC processors. So it also includes a key generation and signing tools. These are, there's a version for Python also in C, and those can be built on any platform. The, the C version includes a Visual Studio project for Windows too. If there is hardware crypto acceleration support in WolfCrypt, then that can be leveraged in WolfBoot as well. So why WolfSSL? Well, we built our libraries for portability um, and performance. So you can build and scale it from a small server to a high-end, a small embedded microcontroller all the way to a high-end server. We have a strong dedication to testing. We do continual testing with static analyzers and fuzzers, a long list of things we do ongoing. Uh, we're mature and widely used, securing 2 billion connections at any one point in time. And we have a commitment to security and features, We're well supported by the community. Thank you so much, David. Let's hand it over to Loic to introduce ST Company and Technology. Hello, my name is Loic Chossa. I work on STM32 Ecosystem Marketing at ST in charge of embedded software offer for microcontrollers. I'm very pleased to present you today an announcement of the STM32 Cube ecosystem during this webinar organized by our partner Wolf SSL. I would first of all like to quickly introduce ST Microelectronics and STM32 products. ST Microelectronics is one of the world's largest semiconductor companies with almost 10 billion of revenue, 46,000 employees over 80 sales and marketing offices, serving over 100,000 customers across the globe. ST Microelectronics is delivering a wide range of products, 
including analog, power conversion ICs, processor and ASICs, MEMS and imaging sensors, discrete and power to sustain the company strategy, smart mobility, power and energy, Internet of Things and 5G. Today's webinar focus on STM32 microcontrollers. STM32 is the leading family of ARM Cortex-M 32-bit general purpose microcontrollers. The portfolio, organized by series, is continuously expanding, bringing more performance and low power consumption, following market trends such as wireless connectivity, advanced security, or local autonomy with AI. Among the last products introduced on the market, you can find the STM32WL with integrated sub gigahertz radio, the STM32L5 in the ultra low power family with trust zone technology, or the STM32G4 with more analogs and specific timers for power control. On the high performance side, we can also mention the expanding STM32H7 series of microcontrollers, as well as the STM32MP1 Cortex A base for Linux developers. This wide STM32 portfolio is complemented by a comprehensive ecosystem, including tools, software, documentation, and support. Many solutions around the STM32 are also proposed to enable and speed up application development and certification. Many partners are also contributing to this ecosystem with various products, trainings, or design services. In today's webinar, we focus on new features of the well-known STM32Cube ecosystem. STM32Cube ecosystem is now becoming even more user-friendly, more intuitive, and offers the possibility to integrate new packages. A new feature enables the integration of partner software solutions in STM32Cube projects, getting developers up and running faster on their own STM32 prototyping board. Wolf SSL has taken advantage of this new feature and has made its popular embedded SSL TLS software component available as an STM32Cube expansion pack. The STM32Cube ecosystem is a software solution for STM32 microcontrollers and microprocessors created for designers interested in a free comprehensive development environment and for users looking to integrate STM32 software in their existing IDE, such as Kyle or IAR IDEs. STM32Cube is a combination of software tools and embedded software libraries. It is a full set of PC software tools addressing each step of a complete development project, configuration, development, programming, and monitoring, as you can see on the left side of the screen. It embeds software bricks 
enabling advanced functionalities in STM32 microcontrollers and microprocessors, from MCU drivers to more advanced application-oriented features, as shown on the right side of the screen. In this webinar, we focus on STM32 CubeMX and STM32 Cube IDE tools, and how users can select and configure software components from STM32 Cube expansion packages announced for STM32 toolset. These expansions are available either from ST, from ST partners, or from the community. Indeed, thanks to the announcements in the STM32 toolset and the new STM32 Pack Creator utility, everyone can expand STM32 Cube tools with his own software components to create one's own STM32 Cube expansion. This expansion can then be privately shared within a company or with outside stakeholders in the online communi community or even offered to customers. ST Authorized Partner Wolf SSL is one of the first companies to release such a package, making its software components available in STM32 Cube toolset. David from Wolf SSL Company will show you shortly how to easily build a new project in STM32 Cube MX or STM32 Cube IDE. STM32 Cube MX software configuration tool helps user, users choose and configure STM32 devices thanks to many software wizards including pinout, conflict solver, peripheral core affinity, and so on. It can also be used to evaluate different power consumption scenarios thanks to its power consumption calculator. After configuring the embedded software bricks of STM32 Cube MCU packages, including HRL and LL drivers, AirTools and middleware, the project generation settings are defined according to user choices. STM32 CubeMX will generate a project with initialization C code for STM32 devices, which can be opened in the user's preferred IDE, including IAR Embedded Workbench and ARM Kyle MDK. On top of this, users can now browse STM32 Cube expansion in the STM32 Cube MX tool and open them. It's also possible to import additional packages that are not listed in STM32 Cube MX tool. Users can select and configure software components from these packages. STM32 CubeMX will then generate a project including these software components for users' own hardware configuration. There are two ways to use STM32 Cube tools. The first one, on the left, is to start with STM32 CubeMX configuration tool. You can generate projects for several IDEs, including IRR, Embedded Workbench, ARM Kyle MDK, or STM32 Cube IDE. If you are using STM32 Cube IDE to write, compile, and debug your own code, you can directly start in STM32 Cube IDE as it integrates all STM32 Cube MX functionalities to offer all-in-one tool experience. This is option two 
which David will be showing you in few minutes in his demo. In STM32 Cube expansion packages, you can find ready to use project examples you could directly open in your preferred IDE, pre-configured to compile and run out of the box on specific ST boards. So far, if you were using STM32 CubeMX tool, you had to generate your project after configuring peripherals and middleware and ERTOS from STM32 Cube MCU package. Then you had to open the project in your IDE and add software components from STM32 Cube expansion packages manually that is, all source and header files. Configuration was also manual in header files. Now, the support of STM32 Cube expansion packages in STM32 Cube MX tool will get you up and running faster on your own STM32 board prototype. Importing expansion software components directly in STM32 CubeMX tool and configuring them before generating the IDE project for your chosen MCU or board target. If you would like to create your own STM32 Cube expansion, a new utility called STM32 Pack Creator is available in the installation folder of STM32 Cube MX tool. It can generate a PDSC file according to the CM6 pack standard. This file describes software components in the packages with dependencies and can be read by STM32 CubeMX or Cube IDE tools, or any other tool adopting this standard, such as the Harm Kyle MDK, for instance. In addition, STM32 Pack Creator allows you to develop the configuration panel and to generate corresponding files for STM32 CubeMX or STM32 Cube IDE tool. If you would like to have more information on how to create an STM32 Cube expansion, visit the dedicated STM32 wiki page. You will find three project samples with step-by-step -step tutorial videos and detailed documentation. If you didn't have the chance to attend the webinar held on September 22nd, named Accelerating STM32 Application Development with New STM32 Cube Tools, check out the webinar replay. Thank you for your attention. I will now let David continue the session. Hello, welcome to this demonstration of the Wolf SSL CubeMX pack for the STM32 tools. So this pack makes it easy to install the Wolf SSL and WolfGrip libraries for supporting the ST microcontrollers. This pack was created using this wiki page right here, which is available on the ST website and the STM32 pack creator tool. And it was based on a Simpsys pack. And to install the pack, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the WolfSSL website. So wolfssl.com forward slash docs, D-O-C-S forward slash STM32, and then we'll click on this link here to download the pack. Now I've already done that, it's right here. 
So the first thing we're going to do is run the STM32CubeMX tool, which I actually already have open right here. And we're going to click on this, this button that says install or remove embedded software packages. So at the top here is the vendor, and uh, ours is not here, so we're going to install it. So we'll cl click this from local button, and we'll go located in my downloads here. And this is based on our latest 4.5.0 uh, release. And this is GPL v2 license. We also offer a commercial license for purchase. So as you can see, the pack is installed here. And we're done with this part of it. So now I'm going to take you over to the, the Cube IDE. This is just a new workspace. And we're going to create a new STM32 project. There's also a way you can do it from an existing IOC file, which I'll show you after this. So for this demo, I'm going to be using the STM32F407 discovery board. This one right here. It's a Cortex-M4. It runs at 168 megahertz. It's pretty inexpensive. And we're just going to call this a wolf demo. And say finish. And it's asking me if I want to initialize all the microcontroller peripherals to their default mode. I'm going to say yes. And then it's asking me if I want to open the ST uh, CubeMX device configuration tool, which I said yes. Oh, looks like there's a newer packets downloading. So inside here, it shows you the actual microcontroller in each of the pins and what they are assigned, what functions they're assigned to. And uh, once this is done downloading, we're going to go to the software packs button up here and we're going to add Wolf SSL in. Oh, it still has to download. I'm just going to click cancel. Let's see if that'll still let me finish here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to software packs. We're going to say select components. And we'll go down to Wolf as a cell here. And you can see the, the modules. We have the, the core part and the TLS part and uh, the test part. So I'm going to select all three of these for this example because uh, I want to include the test code. All right. And so that shows up down here. And we check this box, and you'll get a whole bunch of different configuration options that you can choose. Uh, so for this example, I'm going to use FreeRTOS. I'm going to choose our single precision Cortex-M math, which has a bunch of assembly speedups for this chip. And uh, everything else is fine. So you can just see all the list of options here. And we have more. And I'll show you where this gets generated so you can customize it. So I'm also going to turn on FreeRTOS with the Simsys V2. And the first thing I'm going to do here is increase the heap space. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a task for the WolfCrypt demo. And this is just for the demo. I think I'm going to use 16K here. That's size in words. It's actually a little larger than that, but uh, and it could be smaller. I'm just giving it lots of space to work with here. WolfCrypt demo is the name of the function. And this is an external function. So it's in our code. So this is just setting it up so that there's a task uh, that'll get run automatically in, in this example. So those are the two things I did there. Next, we'll want to turn on the RNG peripheral for the random number generation. Uh, UART2 is the one used on this board for the, the printf that we're going to set up. So that's on PA2 and 3. And then, uh, let's see, we're going to turn on the RTC just so it's there for certificates. And then we're also going to go into the sys and we're going to change the clock source for the RTOS to timer, a uh, timer one. It's just something they want, uh, ST likes. And then I wanted to make sure that the speed of the chip is at its full. So it's already there, 168 megahertz. And that should be everything we need. So let's go ahead and save this and generate the code. Now it's gonna switch to the C, C++ perspective. 
boy, it really, really wants to extract this package here. There must have been an update because I wasn't doing this before. Oh boy. Well, I guess I can let that finish and I'll talk about a few other things. So on this page, some of the instructions that, I, that I'm telling you are here, some are not. Um, one of the things is inside, if you go to github.com slash wolfssl and you go into this directory, IDE STM32 cube, you're gonna see some more information about building for the STM32 targets. And for example, using the hardware crypto acceleration, using the pack. And then in the end, when we get this running, you're gonna have a menu like this where you can run different features uh, to validate the board. There's also some benchmarks posted. These were collected for several different boards, uh, which might be useful for you. There is a template for the configuration file that gets generated when this is done, and which I'll show you. And those options in the configuration tool that gets set here, and then it yields these build options below. So for the board, we're using this STM32F407. I think it's in this list somewhere here. Right here. Yeah, so it, it, what it's doing is defining this build option for this UART on the console. And the other file that's interesting is the main.c. This is just an example for the generated main.c. And there's a couple of interesting bits in here that we'll want to copy paste out that help set up the printf support. And for whatever reason, um, on this, uh, on you know, with the, the pack and the generated code, the printf doesn't work out of the box. So I had to copy and put in a few chunks of code, specifically these ones, which we'll do in a minute here. Yep, this one right here. And then this is that wiki page I was talking about. All right, it looks like it's done. So this is on the ST website for creating these packs. All right. It's almost done. Okay, so it generated this project. And if you go into this WolfSSL directory, you'll see that configuration file I was talking about. And you can see that it'll highlight the, the F407 section right here. And this IOC file is actually what is right here and it's all the configuration information. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And... And then the actual Wolf SSL code is inside right here. And the demo that is being run is actually in this directory right here. So it's this code. And the other thing is, so for this demo, it requires uh, printf float support. So we're gonna go in here into settings and we're gonna turn that on for the compiler. Right, oh, it's right here, these two. And then we'll close that. And then we're gonna build the project. And then, you know, you'll wanna have your favorite, whatever your favorite software is for connecting to the, the UART. So with this board, there's a single SD-Link connection that also has a debug UART on it. And that's what I'm using here, it just shows up as a USB uh, serial port. So now that I've built this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say debug as, we're gonna run it. I'll say okay. So this will use the ST-Link debugger to load the application into Flash. And it's asking if I wanna to switch to the debug perspective, I say yes. And this is actually what was loaded on there before, let me clear that. And we're in the main. Oh, yep, and it's not gonna work. I forgot. Okay, so it's trying to print up, but it's not actually going to the right place. And so what we're gonna do is what I talked about a second ago, which is we are going to copy a couple pieces of code, specifically this section. 
and it's going to go right here. If you put it between the user code marks here, the CubeMX tool will not overwrite it when it regenerates the code. And then we're going to put this one right in, I think. We will put it, just put it right here. Build this again, and we'll load it up one more time. Yes, my fault. Uh, I mean, I need to actually change this to uh, this handy UART macro right here, and then uh, that would be a lot easier for everybody. Yeah, so it's actually UART too. So I'm just gonna change it like that. That should build fine. Well, I had not validated that. We're gonna go to how UART too. Um, this is just saying uh, when a printf character comes in, it's gonna send it to this UART. I need that before I can include that. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and debug it one more time and I will show you the demo and that pretty much concludes it. There is one other thing I will show you while this is happening and it's the location. So inside your home directory, ST puts uh, all the packs into this SDN32Cube repository directory. And inside here, you can find the Wolf SSL pack and there's also some example projects. So. For all these different boards, we have put together an IOC file, which you can actually open and use directly. Um, and I will demonstrate that very quickly after we run this. So now we should actually have something here and I can run the WolfCrypt test. And I can also run the benchmark. Uh, I, one thing to note is I'm in the debug configuration. If you do a release, it's significantly fact, faster because of the optimizations. So those tests finish and we'll fire off some benchmarks. And if you see these numbers right here come in blank, that means you didn't have the, the float support for printf turned on. Okay, so that's the basic demo. And there's also some TLS examples and you, know, you can show your Cypher suite list. So the other thing I was gonna show was using an existing IOC file. So for this, the steps are very similar, except for we're gonna go new STM32 project from existing IOC. And we're gonna go browse into that directory I was just showing you over here. I'm gonna browse into here and we're gonna grab this IOC file. You like my blazing fast internet? Okay, oh, there's some more things to download. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. So uh, these existing IOC files have already been configured with those settings we went through before. Um, I'm just gonna choose the same one right here. So you can just click any of these IOC files. Um, and when you say finish, it's gonna give you the same configuration um, the cube MX configuration screen, but all the things that I went through were already set up, like the, the WolfCrypt demo task, uh, the heap, all those things, uh, they're already set up. And WolfSSL is configured for, for all these things. So you can just open it and generate the code and the project is ready to go. Um, let's see, it's this one. So uh, another thing that's interesting is there is a template for that generated configuration file. It's called an FTL, and it sits inside this CubeMX templates directory. And this file, which I may perhaps be able to open in here, it looks like this. And if you wanted to add a new platform and have it generate the code automatically, you could do this and just edit this S FTL file. The other thing that you could you can do, so let's say uh, this Wolf demo here, you could actually go in and add a preprocessor macro inside here. You could add one called Wolf SSL user settings. And what you could do is, is actually um, take this configuration file 
um, make a copy of it and paste it in here and rename it to user settings .h. Now, I haven't tried this, but uh, it should work fine. So this is actually just setting up a custom build file um, that you can use and it will no longer use the generator one, it'll use this one. So that's, that's an option. So defining that Wolf SSL user settings will, will reroute to this file. And uh, yeah, that's, I think that covers all the really important stuff. Uh, it's been great. Thanks for watching this demo. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You can always send an email to support at wolfssl.com. My name is David Garski, and it's been a pleasure. Thanks.